five and five make ten, and ten make twenty. On the twenty-fourth, an enema, small and gentle, to soften the bowels of Monsieur Argonne, say twenty sous. And ooh, on the twenty-fifth, a good purgative mixture to expel the bile of Monsieur Argonne. Uh, Eighty sous. Oh, okay. And on the 26th, an enema to cure the flatulence of Monsieur Argon, another 80. Oh. Dear me, this month I've only had 12 enema. Last month I had 20. It is no wonder I'm not doing well. I must speak to Dr. Bergon about increasing my treatments at once. Come, Twinnet, have this all taken away. Twinnet! It's no use trying to project through this confounded mask. She can't hear a word I say. Toinette! 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 Coming! Toinette! You jade, you wretch! Curse your impatience. You hurt me so much that I slipped and almost broke my skull of it. You vixen! Ah! Ah! For the last hour I've said... You have left me in... Uh... Do not raise your voice at me. You make me shout for you till my throat is sore. And you make me break my head open. We are even. How dare you speak to me that way? Ah! For the last hour I have sat here and you, you would let me sit here and die. And... Ah! Be silent, you baggage. I'm trying to let you have it. Now come closer. If you insist. I, you get away from me. Do you it want me to get sick? I promise you, sir, when in your proximity, is I who am at great risk of becoming sick of you. No, no, the doctors say that with my age and morbidities, it is I who am at greater risk of becoming... Now listen here, you ah! bitch, ah! I will not stand for... Ah! You... I give up. Have this mess taken away. Ah. Does this mean I may leave? I tell you, you may go and look how quickly you recover. Of course. You offer me the cure to my headache. Go, please, and ready my next round of medicine. I trust you can at least do that. This Dr. Bergon must take great pleasure in torturing you. Hold your tongue. I pay you to take care of me, not for your abuse. Tell the same to your doctors. Ah, oh, my daughter, I have an unexpected piece of news for you. Oh. <clears throat> I say I have an unexpected piece of news for you. It is a matter of most tell. <clears throat> it cannot wait any longer. <clears throat> Excuse me one minute, daughter. A minute? That's optimistic. Please hurry, father. I await your news with great anticipation. All these unnecessary enemas prescribed by Dr. Bagan have her father running everywhere. His robes, the rug, the chair, the- What? Sorry, madame, for my indecency, but Dr. Bagan will be the death of him. If I have to clean one more stain from his robes, I might just kill him. What that? What are you so happy about? Yes. I'm sure it's not about your father's bowels. Only his doctors get that excited. Don't you guess what I'm so happy about? I have some slight idea. It's that young man you've been dreaming of. You mentioned him at a return. Can you blame me for feeling this way? I blame nature. Do you not think when I said he is very handsome? Certainly. That he seems noble? Most certainly. And that nothing is more miserable than the restraint under which I am kept. <sighs> There's a great deal of suffering to go around. Well, I shall soon be satisfied. He says he lost my father from my hand in marriage. <laughs> that will certainly prove his love. Uh, but I, if he deceives me, I shall never love again. <sighs> Here is her father. Pray. Oh. I say, daughter, I have an unexpected piece of news for you. Ah, my joke. I have agreed to give your hand away in marriage. Ah, distance. Sixty, thanks. It's a pleasant thing, marriage. I trust you are smiling under there. Am I? You can hardly mask it. <laughs> well, I suppose there's need, no need me ask, asking if you are willing to marry. Oh, I and I am very glad to possess such an obedient daughter. Well, the thing is settled then. Ah, distance! Six feet. 
My wife, your stepmother, would never consent to this marriage. She wanted to make a nun of you and your little sister, Louisa. The excellent creature has her reasons. But I carry the day and my word is given. I am moved by your consent. I take back everything I've ever said about you. I obviously could not see his face, but I am told you will be satisfied. Oh, most certainly, Father. He's quite handsome. Oh, have you seen him then? to our marriage, I will tell you. We met by chance six days ago. It was love at first sight. Oh, well, they did not tell me that, but I am glad of it. It makes the match all the merrier. They say he is quite pleasant. Certainly. Steady and of good family, right. with the best manners. The best possible. Oh, and speaks Latin. Yes, I did not know. And Greek. I'm so surprised. And that in three days he will be made a doctor. A doctor? Yes, did, did he not tell you? No, who told you? Dr. Pergon. What a question. Does Dr. Vergon know him? Of course, Dr. Vergon knows him. The boy's his nephew. Cleo is Dr. Vergon's nephew. Who's Cleo? I'm talking about the young man you are going to marry. Oh. Dr. Vergon's nephew, Tomabia Horu. The match was decided upon this morning. Oh. Daughter, you look positively ill. You're not getting sick, are you? Can you smell this? I look ill, Father, because I now know. You may not, you impudent jade. And what reason have you for such a marriage? Well, the cost of medical care is at an all-time high. I knew it. I wish to have a son-in-law who is a doctor, so who can assist me in my illness and afford me remedies. Do you even know if you are ill? No, if I am ill. Do you see the pains I endure to be well? I see the pains I inflict to be rich. A good daughter ought to be delighted to marry for her father's health. Oh, she is far from delighted. I will never consent to it. She will consent as is her duty, but I promise the match is advantageous for her, for her as well. Tomas stands to inherit a fortune. She doesn't want money. She wants love. My promise will be made good, and she will oblige me. I feel sure that she won't. Then I will force her. And if she doesn't obey? <laughs> then she will go in a convent. You will put her in there. Yeah. I will. Oh, no. Uh, how so? You will not shut her up in a convent. I will not shut her up in a convent. No. No! I will put her in a convent if I like! Oh, I don't believe you. Uh, she will go in a convent immediately. <laughs> so, the marriage is off then. You conniving jade, you've twisted my words. She will marry the husband I have chosen for her. I don't think so. She will go. Uh, How dare you speak to me that way, you Jane? I shall kill you! Come here. Oh, gently, sir. You forget that you are ill. Come here! Come here, you Jane! You it is my duty to impose what dishonor you. You Jane! Worthless hussy! Oh, don't think stop that shade for me, won't you? Father, oh, don't make yourself ill. <laughs> Why will no one in this house obey me? It is enough to kill me. Well, enough to kill you? <laughs> oh, my wife, please come. Oh, what's the matter, my darling? Toinette puts me in a rage again. Gently, don't excite yourself. Every moment she's near, put the strain on my heart. That girl will be the death of me. Oh, I know, darling, I know. Toinette! I want you to send her away. I promise you, my love, your fragile health is my only concern. I say, Toinette! Why do you have my husband such a passion? I am him. I am to please the master in everything. A oh, deceitful girl. She does nothing but displease me. He says that you are defying his will. Is this true? He wants his daughter to marry the son of Monsieur Diafaru. I simply told him that she would be better off in a convent. A convent? Well, I think she's right. What? You agree with that vile monster? She upsets my heart. No, Toinette, the master is not well. When you upset him, you wish driving him to an early grave. Now, if this happens 13 or 14 more times, I might have to consider letting you go. Hmm. Now come, help me get the master settled. Oh, how fortunate I am to have you take care of me. Set the fly to the spider. Brace yourself a little. Oh. This pillow should help you get comfortable. Oh, and this pillow should help you sleep. 
And she just told me. The rats just tried to pull up. The rats just tried to smother me. Smother you? Oh, if it were that easy. What, my love? I wish it would have been easy. How can I with that villainous baggage? My heart is racing. It might be an attack. Uh, no, it's just as strong as ever. Oh, you are the only one who cares about me. Oh, poor little pet. Poor little prey, more like it. And to repay you for your love, I am ready to amend my will. Oh, I cannot speak of such things. It is painful to even hear the word will. I agree. This is painful to listen to. I want to leave everything to you, my love. If you die, you will take everything from me. She's good. At once, I would like to meet with our notary as soon as possible. Here is close at hand, I've brought him with me. Ah, well, make it quite spend my life. Alas, my darling, when a woman loves her husband, she finds it impossible to think of these things. When a woman loves money, she finds it impossible to think of anything else. Oh. <laughs> oh, come in, come in, Monsieur de Bonfoy. Oh, but distant, if you please. I'm at risk, you know. He is at risk, all right. Which is precisely why I have these for you. My wife says you are one of her closest friends. They sure can't get any closer. I wish to amend my will. Oh, I cannot speak of such things. Oh, my love. If I were unfortunate enough to lose you, life would mean nothing to me. Oh, my dear wifey. And I would follow you to the grave. If I must listen to more of this, I might take one for myself. Your wife has fully explained to me what you wish to do for her, but legally you can give nothing to your wife by will. But why so? The will would be held void. It's disgraceful that a husband can leave nothing to a loving wife. Well, there are some ways of gently overriding the law, ways to smooth over these legal difficulties. Hmm. My wife tells me you are a clever and honest man. Tell me, how can I leave my fortune to her and not to my children? You must discreetly choose a close friend of your wife, leave that friend all by your will, and they will give it to her afterwards. Hmm. You are a close friend of my wife, are you not? Oh, the closest. Can I trust you to do the deed? No. You may trust me in all your wife's affairs. Lioness <laughs> <laughs> curtains need dusting. My wife is very fortunate to have a friend like you in a time of need. I only regret that when I die, I will leave you with no child of my own. Maybe if I. Oh, no, you remember what Dr. Vergara told me about what marital intimacy would do to your heart. Oh, curse my awful hell. Oh, I shall persevere somehow. Oh, your loyalty knows no bounds. Oh, I will do as this man says and quickly will him my estate. Come on, quickly and let us talk no more about it. And in case I should die. I should show you where I have 20,000 francs in gold hidden behind the wing toting in the bedroom. Talk no more of death, I beseech you. How much is this in the bedroom? Oh, 20,000 francs, darling. Talk no more of money, I beg you. And it's all in gold? Oh, for you, my dog. Come, I will show you where it is hidden. Will you leave this honest man to the bedroom? Fear not, Mr. Argon. I know him. <laughs> about a will. It is no doubt some conspiracy against you. He may give away his money, but he may not so freely give away my heart. Help me, Toinette, I beg you. Trust me, I will do everything in my power to help you, but I must now change my tactics and enter the, into the good graces of your father and stepmother. You must tell Cleonte about the marriage they have decided upon. No. Tomorrow morning I will send for him. Trust me, all will be set right. the lovely Angelique about this fatal marriage. Very well, but be careful. She is closely watched. Therefore, I will wear a mask. I am not Cleon's her lover, but the assistant of her music master. Here is her father. Withdraw a little and let me introduce you. Dr. Bergon. 
said I was to walk to and fro in my bedroom every morning, only I forgot to ask, is it lengthways or across? I can never remember these things. Sir, there is... Oh, speak softer, you jade. You make my head ache. I wanted to... Speak talk. softer, I say. Sir. What is it you say? I said there's a gentleman here who wants to speak to you! Let him in. Monsieur, I am delighted to... Speak softer. You will split open the head of Monsieur Avon. Sir, I am delighted to find you up and feeling better. How better? Master's terribly ill. She is right. Sure, he walks, sleeps, and eats like other folks, but that does not stop him from being terribly ill. Quite true. I am sorry to hear it. Sir, I was sent by your daughter's music master. He was called into the country and asked me to come in his place. Hmm. Very well. Call on to leave. I think, sir, I will just take this man to her bedroom. No, make her come here. <laughs> he cannot give her a good lesson if they are not left alone. Oh, yes, he can. Sir, the noise. It will worsen your No, no, no. Music soothes me. Oh, here is my daughter. Please make sure my wife is dressed. My daughter, your music master was just called into the country and has sent this person instead to give you her lesson. Oh, heavens. What is the matter? Is something wrong? No, the gentleman is a dream come true. I beg your pardon? I simply mean that I dreamt last night that I was in the greatest trouble, and that someone exactly like this gentleman came to save me. My surprise at seeing the very man I've been dreaming of all night. If you were ever in any trouble, I would gladly deliver you. There is nothing I would not do for... Sir! Sir, I'm here to see you! Oh. And, um, I take back everything I said yesterday. You've chosen quite the suitor. Oh, if you will excuse me. Oh, sir, please do not go. My daughter is about to meet her future husband. You do me great honor, sir, to allow me to witness such a pleasant interview. Oh, he will be made a doctor in three days. Much better than that worthless vagabond she's had her eye on. Indeed. Oh, you are invited to the wedding, of course. When your daughter gets married, I promise I will be there. Come, make room! Here they are! My apologies, gentlemen. Dr. Bergon has forbidden anyone to be in my presence without a mask. As doctors, I trust you understand. Of course. We are bound by oath not to cause anyone any harm. Oh, well, I would like, like you to be... be... Oh, after, after you. you. Oh, this advantageous <laughs> snack is... Please, please go on. Oh, I never thought the day would come when... Monsieur, please, introduce us to this exquisite young man. Of course. Come on. Come forward and pay your respects. Shall I start with the father? Yes. <sighs> Sir, I humbly receive you as a second father, one whom I owe more to than the first. For he has received me by birth, and you have accepted me by choice. And what a choice! <laughs> Was this your satisfaction, father? Optimate. Come, bow to the gentleman. <sighs> Madame, it is with great justice that heaven has given you the name of stepmother, since we see in you stepmother uh, the person. This is not my wife whom you're speaking to, but my daughter. Where is the stepmother? Oh, she will come soon. Shall I wait for her, father? What? No! <laughs> Give your compliments to the young lady. <laughs> Madame, as the statue of Memnon gave forth a harmonious effect, which are struck by rays of the sun, in like manner do I experience sweet rapture at the sight of your beauty. I offer you my heart, which shall be strong until death and rigor mortis. Oh, at the university, I learned to say such fine things. I bet he is as good a doctor as he is a speaker. Sir, you have fathered a fine young man. Oh, sir, as his father, I could not be more proud. Sure, he is without guile, imagination, or wit. And he was never called sharp or lively as a child. And it was most difficult to get him to read. Oh, uh, a good omen, because like I always say, trees of slow and slow growth. But bear the best fruit. What pleases me the most about him is that, like me, he's attached to the ancient ways of treatment, not the pretended discoveries of modern medicine. Oh! Oh! 
I have a thesis about the subject, which I present to the young lady as both a gift and proof of my genius. Huh. Sir, it is a useless piece of paper to me. I don't understand such things. <laughs> Give it all the say. We will put it in a place of honor in the attic. With your father's permission, I shall invite you to my next lecture, where I will dissect a woman's corpse. How romantic! Some take their lady loves to the play, but uh, this section is much more gallant. Sir, please make my daughter sing before the company. Why, I have just the operetta. It only recently came out. Here is your part. Mine? Don't refuse. Pray, let me first set the scene. The shepherd, Tercy's by chance, meets a beautiful shepherdess, Phyllis. From their love at first sight, he is tormented. He tries to meet the young girl again, but the shepherdess is kept under close watch by her father, who has decided upon marrying her to another. In his despair, he finds the means of entering the house of the shepherdess, but instead comes face to face with his unworthy rival. Seeing that ridiculous, loathsome worm sends him with a wrath he can hardly master. He looks despairingly at her whom he adores, but the presence of her father prevents him with, from speaking except with his eyes and with song. <laughs> And bid them open light to tell me if I live or die. See there is preparation suddenly. Oh, how I wish this would not be. Is he so blessed by your sweet grace as in your heart to find a place? How much do I play for these lessons again? Oh, happy words, am I so blessed? Repeat them, Phyllis, set my doubts at rest. I love you, dear thief. Oh, Phyllis, once again. I love you, dear thief. <laughs> <sighs> of your father's match, what will you do? Will you wear the worm and love to do? disobeying her father. Now give me that sheet music before. There are no written words. How did you? Yeah, here is your wife. Oh, that'll be all, sir. My love, here is the son of Monsieur de Aquarou. Madame, it is with great justice that heaven has given you the name of stepmother. Since we've seen you, yes, sir. Yes, yes, <laughs> Since, 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 uh, uh, Madame, you have interrupted and you have troubled my memory. Keep the speech for a different time. Come, pledge yourself to the gentleman. Father? Do not disobey me. I pray, Father, give us time to see if the affection exists to warrant this union. There is no affection to wait. It is already full grown within me. Hmm. I am not so quick as you are, sir. You have not yet made an impression on my heart. Nonsense, there will be time enough for that once you are married. Huh. Married with a chain which should never be imposed by force. In ancient times, men carried out by force the woman they wished to marry. Huh. Sir, we are moderns. When marriage pleases a woman, she goes to it without being dragged. If she were my daughter, I would force her to marry. I know very well what I would do. Now is not the time. <laughs> you are as kind as you are true. Father, I want a husband that I can love sincerely, not marry only to enrich myself by the death of my husband. What do you mean by this? Oh, what can I mean but what I say? Gentlemen, I'm very sorry. Oh, for nothing can equal your impertinence. <laughs> <laughs> Upon the notary 
tell him to be, to be quick about it. You know what? <laughs> if only my wife were as selfless as my daughter. Leave of you now, sir. Oh, please do not go. This situation quite troubles my health. Uh, do you mind examining my condition? Uh, of course not. Um, Toma, come here. Uh, what is your judgment? The pulse of this gentleman is in the intemperance in the spleen. Uh, quite right. But Dr. Gregon says the fault is in my liver. Yes, because the spleen and the liver are connected through the, um, Metus chloridae. Uh, no doubt he has you eating plenty of roast beef. Uh, no, nothing but boiled. Yes, because roasted and boiled are the same thing. Your doctors are very much. Um, we'll be going now. Uh, but, uh, what? Now, Lord Michael, I must inform you that while passing on to Lake's door, I saw with her a young man. A young man? He ran away as soon as he noticed me. <sighs> a young man with my daughter on the brazen faced girl. Yes, and your little. Your little Louis son was there with them. She will tell you all about it. <laughs> Come nearer, child. But for the distance. Come nearer. Look me in my eye. Well? What, Papa? Have you nothing to say to me? Why don't I tell you the fable of the fox and the crow, which I have just learned? Ah, you cunning little wench, you know what I mean. No, Papa. Have you seen nothing today? No, Papa. Hmm. Well, I shall make you see something <coughs> very soon. You false little girl, your stepmother said you saw a young man with your sister. Papa! Uh, come here, false little girl. This will teach you to tell lies. <laughs> No, first you must be flogged for telling an untruth. For pity's sake, don't whip me, Papa. Mm, hold still. <laughs> Two and... Ah! Papa! You have hurt me. I'm dead. How now? Poor Louis Saad, my poor child. Wretched father, villainous rod, what have I done? My poor child is dead! Come here, Papa. Don't weep so. I am not quite dead. Yet. <sighs> Cunning little wench, I'll forgive you just this once only if you tell me everything. Oh, yes, dear Papa. And remember, my little finger knows all and will tell me all that you don't. Papa, a young man came into Sister's room. He said he was her music master. I see. She said to him, go away, go away. You will drive me to despair. And then? He told her that he loved her dearly. And then? Then he knelt down before her, kissing her hands. And then? Then stepmama came to the door, and he escaped. Nothing else? No, dear papa. Mm, one second. Huh? Oh. Hmm? Mm, my little finger says there is something you do not tell me. Ah, Papa, your little finger is lying. We shall see. You may go. This situation is very troubling. I am quite done up. Yeah. Very bad. Not that anyone believes me. I came here to discuss this proposed match for my niece, Angela. Oh, do not speak of that wicked girl! I am a good mind to put her in a convent! Well, I see you have a little strength left in you. That girl's insolence greatly... <laughs> Excuse me one moment, brother. Sir, you forget you cannot walk without your stick. <laughs> Sir, you must prevent this foolish marriage. I shall do all in my power to help her. We must also help your brother. If only there was an honest doctor to disprove Dr. Bergon and his methods. But where can we find an honest doctor? I have a rather absurd idea. What trick have you conceived? Here's our men. Just play ball when the time comes. You wish to speak, brother? Will you promise to listen calmly? Yes. 
And not to respond with anger. I will try. And try not to be evil. Dear me, yes, get on with it. Why is it, brother, that with only one daughter, for I do not count the little one, you speak of sending her to a convent? I ordered her to marry and she disobeyed. But why do you wish her to marry a doctor? I wish to have a son to assist me in my illness. Is it possible, brother, that you are not even ill? Not even ill? Well, only a healthy man can survive all these medications. Dr. Bergon says I would die without his care. And I say that it's his care that will kill you. But we have strayed from the main subject. Your daughter's aversion to marrying the doctor is no reason to shut her up in a convent. You must. Time for your afternoon enema. Uh, of course, Monsieur Florent. Brother, if you'll excuse me. No, we are discussing important matters right now. The enema can wait. How dare you defy the doctor's prescription? You have no right to prevent this enema. Go now, sir, or I'll make you eat it. You have wasted my freshest time in the good mix mixture. <laughs> Dr. Brigham, we'll hear of this. Brother, what have you done? What need to be done? It is easy to speak against medicine when one is healthy. But tell me, what disease do you suffer from? I only wish you had my disease so you would not doubt my... Here is the impertinent man, doctor. I have just heard the news from Monsieur Florent. You dare refuse my treatment? No, 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 it wasn't me. which I composed myself. It wasn't me, I swear. It is treasonous. Such conduct is high treasonous. But it was my brother who... He is unworthy of you. I hereby break off all intercourse with you. Including Dr. the marriage. Brown. Including your daughter's marriage to my nephew. Dr. Brigham, please listen. I would have soon hear you. No, Dr. Brigham. But now I give you leave. Mercy on me, Dr. You shall fall into this messia. Dr. Brigham! You shall fall into apathy. <laughs> apathy into dysentery. Dr. Brigham, come on! Into dropsy. Dr. Brigham! Good day. <laughs> Why? What's the matter? You've killed me, brother. I can already feel my body avenging itself. Do not give way to your imagination. This is an opportunity to finally rid yourself of doctors. <laughs> so there is another doctor here who desires to see you. Another doctor? Yes, and he and I look so alike that now I'm not sure if my mother was an honest woman. I may be saved yet, brother, but please hold your tongue with this one. I promise nothing. Hey, sir, I wish to offer you any bleeding purging you may require. Mm. <laughs> Toinette herself, I'd say. Excuse me, sir, I forgot to give a small order to my servant. <laughs> Would you not say that that's really Toinette? It is true that the resemblance is very striking. Well, for my part, if I had... What is it you want, sir? What? Did you not call me, sir? No, I... I... My ears must have tingled then. Remarkable. Had I not seen them together, I truly would have believed that two were but one. I have read wonderful stories about such resemblances. So forgive my excitement at meeting such an illustrious patient. I have traveled far to meet you. The resemblance is wonderful. I know why you stare. How old do you think I am? I should think of 26. Ha! I am 90 years old. 90? Yes, this is what my treatments can do. Good heavens. <laughs> Come, let me feel your pulse. Oh. Who is your doctor? Dr. Pergon. He is not mentioned among the great doctors. What does he say ails you? Uh, he says the liver. Others say the spleen. But... Pack of ignorant blockheads. You are suffering from the lungs. The lungs? Yes. What do you feel? Um, pains in my head. The lungs. A, a weariness in my limbs. The lungs. And aches in my stomach. The lungs. What does he feed you? Um, prunes to soften the bowels. Ignoratus. Uh, wine diluted with water. Ignoratus. And um, um, small crackers to keep my stomach from hurting. Your doctor is ignorant too. You must drink your wine pure to thicken the blood and eat good fat beef and cheese. I will take on the heavy task to treat you myself. Oh, doctor, I am greatly obliged to you. Do you see how this arm attracts all the nourishment to itself and hinders the other side from growing? Um, yes? If I were you, I should have it. Cut off. Oh, but I have need for my arm. I would also pluck out your right eye. My right eye? Yes, 
Don't you see that interferes with other? Um, uh, there's no hurry to get to Yes, old. yes. I must wait. I must go see a patient who died yesterday. A patient died yesterday? Yes, it must be seen what can be done to bring him back to life. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> My word, that doctor seems to be a very clever <laughs> man. He wants me to cut off my arm and pluck out my eye. Don't you wish to be well? I think for the first time I would prefer to stay ill. Come now, doctor. It's quite enough. Oh, what is the matter? I have just escaped that doctor's advances. He said he wants to feel my pulse. Huh. Virile and at 90 years of age. My dear brother, now with this doctor situation settled, may we finally discuss my niece? No, she will be put in a convent. But Dr. Burgon said the marriage was off. Yes, but she disobeyed me and had a secret meeting with a boy she knows I've no she knows I know nothing about. She will become a nun. No doubt your wife is happy about the idea. But why is everyone against that saintly woman? You are as deceived by your wife as you are by your doctors. Ah, sir, don't talk so of mistress. She is a woman without deceit. Yes, there is no better wife than she. And we will prove it to you. Oh. Let us show him his mistake. How? Stretch yourself out and pretend that you were dead. You will see her grief. Okay. I consent. Whee! Mistress, come quickly! But don't stay too long, for she might die of despair. is dead. He has just breathed his last. <laughs> oh! Oh! Ah! 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 Me, please! I am finally delivered from that unpleasant wretch, always sniveling and spitting and coughing to the tedious, ill-natured man. You know, I have spent the best years of my life with him. Well, no more. Now I can finally have guests in this house. I can host parties, and I can finally take off this ridiculous uh. So, wife, this is how you love me so? Oh, I'm my husband. Pack your things and leave this house. Is your husband dead? No, he is very much alive. Monsieur de Bonnefoy, what were you doing back in the bedroom? Uh, I was just checking your wife's assets. Oh, Monsieur de Bonnefoy, I know the truth. And never again will I be made such a fool. You must know that my wife has not been an honest woman. Uh, oh, I am just as shocked as you are. Well, good day to you, sir. Good day. Now there goes an honest man. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, you have become quite the judge of character. Here is her daughter. Play the part again and see how she receives news. Okay. I hoped I might convince him to give me your hand. Oh, Cleant, let us talk no more of marriage. Now that my father is dead, I must renounce the world and join a convent. Father, let my honoring of your final request serve as proof of my repentance. Oh, my <laughs> daughter! Oh, fear not, daughter, I am uh, not dead yet, and I am glad to learn your true heart. I am delighted you live, father. But. Turn you to me, I implore you, please give me Cleon for a husband. Sir, please allow your heart to be touched by our entreaties and bless our mutual love. Brother, how can you resist all this? Will you remain cold to such affection? Fine. 
I will consent to the marriage on the condition on the condition that he becomes a doctor. Very well. Anything to win the fair, Angelique. Brother, an idea just struck me. Why don't you yourself turn doctor? Quite true. Then you could cure yourself and at no cost. Can one study at my age? <laughs> study? Your whole life is medicine. You know more than most at university. But in order to be a doctor, you must know Latin. That will come once you put on the cap and gown. You're saying, once I dress as a doctor, I will know as much as one? I promise, you will know as much as any doctor. <laughs> Shall we have the ceremony done immediately? Yes, have it done at once. <clears throat> Ego sum non Americus, non have autoritatis, et latine non loquentur, cum quat e vocame, non intelligent, sique ride et medicus. How do you feel? Hmm. Smart, dignified, and quite confused. I Congratulations, sir, you are a doctor. Well, Dr. Argon, what will you do now? Mm. I shall first cure, uh, I shall first diagnose myself. Toinette, bring out my instruments. Come to Cape. Yes. Ow. Our torment is over. You're now free to marry. Oh. Our torment is finally over. We're free of doctors. Oh, very interesting. My torment has just begun. I'm now free of money. Why, that makes perfect sense. It seems we all have quite the happy ending. The tests are in and my diagnosis is complete. I can confirm that I have the plague. You are all now in quarantine. 